Welcome back to Comedic Mind Season yeah. 2. Yeah. In the house, I'm I'm Valentine. <laughs> Are you I always sure? mess that up. <laughs> when I'm about to say my name, I'm like, I'm Valentine. And it's your girl, Ivana. Yes. I know my name. That's right. We back. Listen, this season is going to be full of awesome guests. Um, I just thought, I mean, what, Melody Camacho, TK yes. Kirkland, today... Ooh, I'm excited. Yes, um, today we have Miguel A. Nunez Jr. He will be here with us today. Are we on the screen? Can they see me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we see something Sorry, different. So I'm pros. like, wait a minute. <laughs> we try to make sure that y'all see yeah, us. Yeah, okay? that you see us. Specifically me. But listen, um, I really want to let you know that um, we spru- spruced up the place a little bit. We felt like we should uh, give flowers to uh, some of the comedians while they are alive. So throughout the season, you will see different pictures of different comedians. We'll try to keep it as diverse as possible to give homage to everyone in the comedic space. Amazing. Um, also, we will also be incorporating uh, crucial topics. Yes, got to. Because these are crucial times yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, like I was saying right before we came back on, I was like, we're we're back. Like, yeah, man. thank God, because we didn't know how or when we was going to come back. I just know you said, I want to. We're going to do it just with yeah. this pandemic. Oh, oh, and just so you know, uh, Ivana and I are the only ones in the studio. We do have our masks. We are social we are distancing. Are, Doors are. are open. We checked our temperature before we got in yes, here. Yes, we are. We are both. I'm good. I don't know about him, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't know how good, but I'm good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, we here. Uh, also, for the safety of our guests, they'll all be Skyping in. Yes. So we won't be having anybody tr- truck all the way over here to the studio, sitting in here, you know, bunched in between yeah. us. And, Although uh, we miss it, though. Yeah. Just you do miss can't. It. Uh, yeah, I'll be very, uh, I'll be very happy when things get back to normal. Same, and same. We can get back to that face to face. I and know. Hands on and getting uh, crowd. And I'm a homebody. It's me too. I'm a homebody, but I'm I, I'm done. I can't take it another second. Same. I'm a homebody. I'm an introvert, but when I go outside, I like to ex- experience things in the world, like but by myself. Mm-hmm. And outside's not fully open here, so I yeah, can't really no experiment. Movies, you, no. Oh my god! I used to go to movies all the time by myself. Same. I'd be like, sneak my food in. Yeah. I would yes. get high in my car first, and then <laughs> I, I, go I do that, walk I do in that part. and go see like a scary <laughs> movie or something. Mind blown. You cannot yes. tell me that I'm not a film critic. You know when yeah. I'm in the movie theaters. Yeah. Yeah, myself, myself posted <laughs> yes and i love to go yes. on sundays at the matinee with all the yes. older people you go the same time sundays i use my student discount all me that too yes. and i graduated from grad school years ago i still, I still have, have my, my ID. undergrad <laughs> i don't care Ooh, i'm getting I, in at six dollars yes i still yep. use my id i don't care As i like you here you go they yep. don't ask me no questions they and sure i don't tell them no lies and i look the same anyway so i, I dare that's them. right black don't crack that's right i dare bowen hills crenshaw to say something <laughs> Oh that my, my wait favorite. a minute. I go there too. Same. On Sundays. It's the spot. It is. I love it. it. I don't know what it is. I, I don't want to go nowhere else. Yeah. I take I, the drive I like down right to there. Crenshaw. Well, every now and then I'll go all the way out to the valley. The valley's cool now. They're in like, like NoHo, yeah. they have some some decent days too. We're in yeah. California, so we're yeah. talking about the valley. So talking about COVID, yeah. that was one of our crucial topics. Yeah. We feel like there's certain things we just can't ignore that are going on in the world. So um, um, amongst comedy, speaking to comedians and people in the comedic space, laughing, joking, hearing some of their stories, mm. um, connecting newer comedians with veteran comedians. Yeah. We want to ha- talk about crucial topics. There's just certain things that's going on in life right now we just can't seem to, we can't ignore. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, especially since, you know, our shows are literally, you know, they got canceled. Our shit got canceled, you know? So Someone's so for some of us, just like me. rappers, they, they make most of their money from performing. Like stand-up comedians, we make mm-hmm. most of our money from performing too. And we can't perform on stage. And that, for a lot of us, is our bread and butter. So we're trying to switch online. And that, I mean, it's That's, it's, it's temporary, I'm but the instant gratification is just not there. Mm-hmm. Like when you're performing in front of an audience. So that's what really bothers me. So just for you uh, out there, you fans, uh, Ivana, is a comedian, mm-hmm. an active, up and coming comedian. I am not. I'm the crucial conversations piece of this. <laughs> crucial conversations, comedian yes, yes. piece of this. I am not a comedian. I don't even think I would try. I think I would just straight up offend people. Probably. And they, <laughs> and they would boo, and I'd be like, "You would kiss my ass." <laughs> See? See? <laughs> so I, I can't do it. But at any rate, um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, man, COVID-19, you know, it kind of the first, uh, what is it, shelter in place happened. Yes. And I couldn't go to the gym. The gym's closed. So gyms I literally are closed. T- Even at the apartment complexes, gyms yes. are closed, too. I literally, because, I, I mean, if you can't tell, I work out. He done bulked up or whatever, but he didn't. I didn't did. make it happen. You got to come out of COVID looking right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But I, I literally bought all new furniture, turned my place into a gym. Like, it's like an awesome right. gym. That's what people are doing. I had to people make have it happen. home gyms now. That mm-hmm. feel that because I'm I'm moving to and I'm like I'm going to be spending even more time at home so I really need to invest in my space mm-hmm. and if I'm gonna be doing more online work like I want to make sure that I have my equipment together I'm moving by myself so I'm just like I, I'm gonna have my own oasis my own mm-hmm. haven and like I, I can't wait even um, I mean I, Lord I think I watched everything under the sun like on Netflix Hulu. I have watched are, Netflix I, I, I've started to actually rack up I bought Disney I got Disney Plus same. Um, Prime, Same. With Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. uh, Hulu, and I pay for the cable. For, I get all the cable to <laughs> HBO. Um, I got HBO. I got Showtime I got and Netflix. Stars. Yes, me yeah. too. Okay, so I go back and forth. Well, I got I have Netflix, um, Stars. I go back and forth. I pay for a month. And I Me watch too. Only when like power's on. It. And then I, yes. and then, then I, then I'll see another show, and I can't watch it, and I burst is another month. Yes. Like I'm like yes. off and on about it. I'm like, ah, whatever. But I'm yeah. so bad at that. But I only mm-hmm. cut stars on whenever uh, power is back, which oh, yeah. it is. So that's the only thing. Showtime is. They have some pretty consistent uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Showtime's the good to me. I think it's just. Um, I mean, I, I I can't help but see all of these videos with the quote, quote unquote Karens. And they don't want to wear masks. I mean, the, I mean, I've seen videos where people in the stores that work at the store and yeah. also patrons will have to fight somebody. Having to you know. fight, yeah, these I've, women. But the thing is, these people are very like oh, I can aggressive. Curse, right? That's yeah. right. I a very aggressive, and they want like, all right. So I got triggered one time. I saw this video. It was uh, these two ladies. They were in, two white women. They were in a, a Starbucks or something like that. And Ooh. the, the uh, barista, I guess you would call them. That's they where they're made. That's refused the to that serve made. them. So they pull out their phones and they, yeah, I, it's my God given right to carry it on. So it's like, listen, they told you, you know, no service without a mask. That's in the story. That's Period. the policy in the story. I, you got to go. So they're carrying on and uh, there's another guy. He pulls out his phone. I guess that's the phone we all watching from. Uh-huh. The angle. So um, one of the ladies. She said, yeah, it's a hoax, and she's in his face. And I'm like, why are you in his face? That's so gross. Like, That's why so dirty. are you in his face? Why are you? And then she, and then you know what she did? She leaned over, and she was like, yeah, you could catch COVID. And did like <laughs> To blow in his face. I've seen some I of them coughing. I literally yes. was triggered. Yes. I felt like she assaulted. If it was me, right. I felt like she would have assaulted me and I would have had to knock her out. Or, I mean, sorry as a woman, but I'm or sorry. Shake She's her trying very to put my something. life on the line. Seriously. Like, you can believe anything you want to believe, but you can't do that to me. Like, no, take, because you don't know if I there. probably have an upper respiratory issue. Yes, you can't do that. Like, what are you doing? You cannot do that to people. And so it's it's very, I, I treat masks as very like, um, whenever you walk into a, an establishment, they say, no shoes, no shirt, no service. That's how it is now. No mask, yeah, no yeah. service. You know what I'm saying? Almost you just every store. I think that. every store you're going. If you walk in there, every immediately store. start yelling. They, you know, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh-huh. Once in a while, I forget. Yeah. Like I'll be in the car and I'll just <laughs> jump out and I forget to turn. But I remember the second I walk in and I see all, all these faces yeah. with masks, I'm like, oh, and I yeah. walk right out. I feel you know? that. But, see, yeah. but the only thing though is in the South they are not enforcing it as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's because we also have more wide open space. See, out here on, in L.A., we're just like all on top of yeah, each other. Yeah, we're not playing but at But in all. the South, no, because I, I love Bucky's. I be in Bucky's steady. Anytime I go back to, to Dallas or whatever, what I'm going that? through between Dallas and uh, East Texas. Bucky's is a rest stop. It is one of the best rest stops in the nation. They have literally everything. You can buy, like, food, clothes, get your gas there, rest stop. They have, it's the best, <laughs> cleanest rest stop in the world. Okay. But anyway, hell of white people just coming through all these Joe Bobs, Jim Bobs, no mask on their face, Ooh, and they're nice. actually getting served, serviced. Oh. So it's it's not really as enforced as it needs to be, I think, in the South, though. I don't know. To me, I, to me, it's just all common sense. I'm mm-hmm. not a scientist. Mm-hmm. But everybody can't be doing different things and expecting... You know, to get some consistent results. I don't trust especially when you can still drive and fly between states. Yeah, it's like I feel like honestly, it's starting to become not the United States, but the the, the divided states of America. Yeah, I'm like as, the more we go along, it yeah. seems like it's just growing to be divided states of America. Because quite honestly, like the way that um you know we're all treating this 
by states. It's it is more like states' rights. It's just up mm-hmm. to what your governor says or you oh, know your, your, your local mayor says. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we mm-hmm. are all just kind of playing this by ear, just depending on whatever our local politician says. It's just all over the place. Mm. But I want to talk next about the passing of Ruth Bader. Mm-hmm. Ginsburg. God Ginsburg. Bless her soul. Ginsburg. Yes. Uh, rest in power. I I don't know, man. You know, I I have no idea what else this means for for the state of America. I don't. Well, I, I had I have a lot of feelings wrapped up in it. I'm um, actually um, that night. I was very. I think it was like what yesterday night. Mm-hmm. I was very stunned. Mm. Um, I was emotionally moved. And I was kind of surprised to see. Um, I watched all the TV, you know, different TV shows, and mm-hmm. people were crying. Yeah, and really emo- Even I Truly. text people. I said, oh, "What's up? How you doing?" And one one homeboy of replied and said, "Not good." I said, "What's wrong with you?" He said, "Ruth Bader Ginsburg died." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Wow, people are really impacted because they Truly. understand the weight of what's what's about to happen." Yes, there's going to be a fundamental shift, real fundamental shift. Truly. And the way justice is served and um, people's um, r- rights. Yeah. And the reversal of what? A possible reversal of Roe versus Wade. And, and that is all my types issue, too. Like, yeah. Especially, in, and as a woman, as a black woman, too, in America, it's just like, I, like I said, I don't know exactly what this means, but if if the state of women's health and women's reproductive uh, health is reliant on one woman, who serves like a lifetime, you know, in her political position, like that's how you know there's truly an issue in America. Mm-hmm. Because for I, what I'm hearing in my circles is a lot of women are like, what does this mean for my reproductive health care? Mm-hmm. What the hell does this mean for me? I- because at the top of the, um, whenever Trump did get elected, a lot of women were saying, you need to make sure that you secure your birth control right now. And I actually did that. Wow. So that's why I was like, how do you secure like, your birth control? Just to make sure that I mean, some women were getting, um, some women were getting like the IUD and Mirena, just making sure they stocked up on their birth control, making sure you have places to go to, because you know, you know, they're coming after Planned Parenthood. They've been doing that oh, before yeah. Ruth been died, down, yeah. you know. And so Planned Parenthood is definitely a place where you can get things at a low or no cost. But if they're trying to attack that, where the hell do women go? Um, I, I, you people probably, probably you know? of course, don't notice about me, but I'm also a college professor, so mm-hmm. I teach. And um, uh, one of the universities that I teach at have a, a lot of uh, international students. Mm. And a lot of them, so in one of the courses I teach, um, we started to talk a lot, of, we talk a lot about um, employment law and stuff like that. So mm. um, we talked about protective classes and stuff like that. And we were, I'm touching on um, all the protected classes and, you know, um, uh, women, mm-hmm. and, um, races and uh, sexual orientation, all these different things. And um, the conversation kind of got a little uh, uh, d- uh, deep on that subject. Ooh. And I literally, I had watched maybe uh, maybe two weeks earlier to the to that class, um, Notorious RBG. On, yeah. I think, is that on Netflix or Hulu? I think it's but, on Hulu. I know exactly and, what you're talking um, about, yeah. They didn't have a clue who, who, I, who I was talking about. And it really pissed me off. Mm. And I'm like, how y'all all in here and don't know who Ruth Bader Ginsburg is? How you don't know? Uh, do you even know who she is? And, mm. and I, they were like, no, it's like a Supreme Court justice. They didn't know what I was talking about. I was like, I can't take it. So I literally wow. made the whole next class was Notorious RBG. You need to watch this. Okay. And this is all you about protected homework. classes yeah. and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. they were so into it. So I know that there's a whole, well, at least 32 students out there right now mm-hmm. who knew who she was and the significance, thank God, because of my class. And the impact that that really mm-hmm. means. I think for me, I got extra emotional because I felt like she she is like a fighter and a patriot, a true. Truly. Like I feel like she was holding on. She was. She was. I feel like she was fighting. She was like, "No, I can't die. No, I'm not gonna die. I'm gonna fight this yeah. because I know what's at stake if I die." Yeah. So she really fought, and I feel like a part of me felt sad, but then a part of me felt like, you know what? She deserved to rest. The rest of y'all us need to, need to pick up the mantle. She was mid eighties, like you deserve rest. Yeah, she. I was like, you know what? She deserved the rest. I can't be mad. She she yeah. did all that she could do while she was here. Mm-hmm. It is other people's turn. Truly, do it. Truly, you know. It it, it is. Um, and you know, Ruth is is she was one woman, but absolutely a product of, you know, just the different waves of uh, the women's liberation movement. Because without Mm -hmm. that, Ruth wouldn't have even been able to be where she is, you know, and she's, uh, there was also somebody, sorry, her name is slipping me, but, you know, Ruth is not the first woman. There was also another woman who was um, appointed as well before her, but. Uh, 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 Wasn't a a white lady? Another white lady. Yeah, right, right. I forget her name, I'm sorry. 
So. Exactly. No, but however, <laughs> I mean, it's those things, you know, when you you pave the way, you know, she's she's paving the way for women who who are in politics and women who are, you know, looking up to her for that. So that's kind of one thing that I'm I'm worried about, too. But I do understand. I feel that we have some good women who are already in politics right now. And I feel that we okay, just would need to support them. I agree. Mm-hmm. I honestly and I don't care what people say about this young lady. I'm sorry. Every time she opened her mouth, I'm like, yo, that's the, that's a future president. Who? AOC. AOC. I'm sorry. When this lady, every time she opened her mouth, I'm like, this one. AOC knows this, how to speak more to of her. demographics. Yeah. It's just that she, you know what she has a combination of? Um, well, she's, she's, she's. She's young and ready to she's go. Young. She fill, she ready. She filled yeah. up a fire. Yeah. Now she does. She's missing what what time will bring her is a is a uh, the wisdom of experience. Mm-hmm. Wis- mm-hmm. Experience brings wisdom. Yeah. But what she exuberates is this youthful sharpness. Mm. She has a and she's so passionate about her issue. She don't need her talking points. She mm. don't need the she she can speak and it's eloquent. She didn't curse. Yeah. She didn't say um. You know what I'm yeah. saying? She's not stumbling around. Yeah. Where most politicians when they talk, it's it so sounds dry. so rough. Right. Hers. It's driving it sounds so over my head. Yeah, but just not even over my head, like through my fu- my freaking eyeballs. Through me. Right. Like it reminds me of yeah. uh, uh, a science teacher I had in, 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 in junior high school, uh, Mr. Zephyrin. He was like, oh, yum, 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 yum. boring. That's all I heard. I was like, boring. I was like, this. Oh. right. I was like, and that's what I feel for most politicians. I'm like, yeah, uh huh, all right, next. Yeah. But then, but then you get somebody, well, how did they start talking? He like, yeah. You straighten up and, and you're listening. Inflection in your voice. Yes. I had a passion. Yes. You didn't need no talking points. You don't sound rehearsed because you believe it. You know it. You live it. You breathe that. it. And you well spoken. And you pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And not to the point where you still have a grasp on uh, uh, slang. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like about to say, like, she, to, she speaks to, to in be a way, relatable. Yeah, ex- she's very relatable. That's I what I'm saying. Talk, I, 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 can hang, I hang out with her chicks like that all the time. I know her. You know, yeah. that's how I feel like I know her. I know her, her from the Bronx, from, I'm from too. the Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm from New York. I'm from the Bronx, yeah, too, girl. Like, that's how I'm I feel. Like, I know her when yeah. she starts talking. Yeah, so I'm like, yo, I'm feeling her. I feel that, too. So she is one of the ones where I feel like, wow, she could be up and coming in the future. I can see that, too, but I... I actually really admire the experience that she has now because she's able to speak to as somebody who, you know, worked as a bartender. Like, she's worked these service jobs. And what we're yes, a lot of people been. are doing right now during and this pandemic family. is having to return to service jobs. Yes. Or they're losing their service job or they're having to file unemployment because they're actually making more money on unemployment than they are from their service jobs. So she has that unique perspective as well that I appreciate she's able to speak to, too. Mm-hmm. And that's very much so what we need right now. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be some good experience that's going to hold her over throughout her political career, too. Too. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I like her. Yeah, I'm not big. I I understand politics. I will watch the hell out of political documentaries all the time. But I don't, oh, I do. I don't say that I have a favorite politician because it's politics. I no, I don't have a favorite, but I'm just like they, this one plays the game well. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. how I look at yeah. things. Yeah. Um, another thing I feel like is just you can't avoid it. I just wanted to touch on, and we probably next week expand more on to into. Mm-hmm. Into um, more Black Lives Matter stuff and all that, but um, <laughs> just the police accountability or lack thereof. Whoa, yeah, but and what? Um, I don't. I'm gonna check and see. I don't think so because I often clear my text messages, but I'm gonna tell you the story. Uh, tell you a story. Oh, you know what? I think I did. Hold on. Oh, you got us waiting. I think I did. Yes, because I delete. I deleted anyway. But um, what's the story? But I'll tell you what happened. So, um, police. With this lack of accountability, and so um, I'm on, I'm, I'm on uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. and um, I'm, I'm openly gay man, mm-hmm. and um, so most of the people I follow are hot dudes. I'll mm-hmm. be honest, you know, cool. A couple of hot chicks, but more hot dudes. Yeah, and, my, and specifically, I, I see, see your like, Instagram. I didn't know you be thirst trapping like that on your IG. I don't thirst trap. Yes, you do. <laughs> I just be in the gym flexing a little bit. Okay, or I'm on the mirror at my place because it was because of COVID. You can't be in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I knew you talking police. So you know how to do something. I, I took me a while to, to figure out what I was going to do because I wasn't in the gym no more. Trapping. Just jump in the mirror. But um, so I'm on there, and uh, this guy, you know, he shirt off a Latino guy. Yeah, he was hot. Okay, you know, I was like, oh, you're cutie. So you know, I follow, and after a while, you know, he, I'm, I'm like, oh, he's a police officer too. Cool, you know, I, I don't hate police officers at all. So I'm like, he's a cutie, a police officer. So I DM'd him, <laughs> and he hit me back. I, but when I DM, I was like, yo, you a cutie? So he was like, oh, you too. So 
that was the, the start. Okay. So we, you know, we talking back and forth or whatever, and we ended up exchanging numbers. Mm. So we talked, and um, he actually is in the D.C. area. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's fine. Okay. I mean, I'm friends as friends. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. But, but at any rate, so the story is um, how it comes around to this mm-hmm. is, um, you know, we're talking and um, everything out of his mouth is talking about, yeah, that they're doing it to, uh, to, to us. And don't they, we have to protect, people want us to protect them. I mean, very nasty. Yeah. Like, he is a, he's, 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 he's take it personal. You know, like, oh, Definitely. me, and we, I'm, I want to do my job, and people are, they, people want to defund us, can you believe it? And I'm just sitting there like, okay, so, uh, this could be the end of the, the end of our friendship before it begins, if I, I open so. up my mouth. You know, because <laughs> I'm like, if I open up my mouth, you about he to be ain't gonna like me. He ain't gonna like it. So, um, basically, um, we had a conversation um, where I, 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 I pretty much broke it down, because a lot of, a lot of people don't know, also spent many years as a, a senior uh, human resources executive in corporate All in the right. corporate world. So I told him, I said, "Well, um, no one wants to defund the police. First of all, basically, people in the end of it, a uh, uh, grand scheme of things, just want accountability because you mm-hmm. don't have any. Mm-hmm. You have all these protections. You have the police un- police union yeah. protect you. If something happened, you slaughter people, killing people, just whether it's by by mistake or on purpose. Mm-hmm. You just go on if and if." The, the community makes a big deal. You just go on administrative leave with yeah. pay. Otherwise, you know, if they don't make like a big that, deal, they can or, maybe just keep get stay off. on the field you know, or maybe like, have an office job. I, I was like, you're, I said, I said, basically, you know, you know, you're an employee. You're not like the savior. Like you're an employee. And he was like, excuse me. I was like, yeah, you're an employee. You work for the police department. You work for the community. Like mm-hmm. you're an employee. Every yes. employee has consequences. Otherwise, do what the hell they want to do. Yeah. You know. I said, at this point, you've been doing whatever you want to do yes. to some extent. I said, I said, um, I said, all, all, all the, you know, people, the community really asking for is. Um, for accountability and repercussions, like you, you can't just mm-hmm. go around doing whatever, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's by mistake or on purpose, you have uh, uh, some uh, consequences mm-hmm. to your act to these mm-hmm. actions. <clears throat> and um, I don't know. He went on a rant about oh, mm-hmm. police. We uh, are we doing this in the community, that community. He just you know just. I felt like it, I felt like it was kind of talking points. Like I was like yeah. he, I was like uh, so I, I'm not one to be distracted. So I was like, okay, so back, I understand that, and I'm and I'm grateful for what they're doing. And he sent me pictures, like he was kept texting me pictures of pol- of uh, police officers um, um, playing basketball. Don't nobody give a or damn play, about play, that. Sk- uh, 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 what do you call it? Double Dutch with the kids no? <laughs> in the hood. And I was thinking to myself, oh, that's nice. But you still need to have consequences for your actions. Like yeah. you still have to. You're an employee. So he said, well, what are you gonna do if? if oh, oh, he said, um, well, what do you do if we just stop coming to work? We just call out. I was like, well, you get fired. That's consequence. I was like, you'll be told, okay, if you don't come back to work, we could get some people to replace you. I yeah. was like, the same police that were there in 1860 something, mm-hmm. they're not there no more. They died. Yeah. I said, like, now you there. Yeah. I was like, so they were replaced, and so can you be replaced? I was like, you don't. I was like, you're not a fixture. Like we can't do it without you. Oh my god, we got the place is going to fall apart. Civilization is going to move on. We've. I, I mean, like, <laughs> we've had, we've lived lives without the police that we have here in America too, and that's how I know people are brainwashed because people cannot imagine what system we could have if we were to defeat fund the police that we have now like they're doing but, more but what harm do you mean good. when you because see see i think a really good a really good and useful tool that is used is demonizing words and mm-hmm. people hear certain um, words and they immediately um like turned off word? like defunding oh i mean or that. um uh or like uh, uh what is it um uh, 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 pro-choice or whatever it is that they use about it's like oh you turn my killing babies like, no we didn't say we had planned, no. parent, planned parenthood don't just do that doesn't just quote unquote kill babies no, and they don't that. kill babies but the thing is um so defunding the police for me it means um creating um some measurements of accountability and maybe taking all the money that you get for all of those tanks and missiles that you pull out, you know, to, for a crowd, for the crowds of people who you mm-hmm. serve, like you, like you actually go on a war. Like they, like to me, sometimes they more armed up than I see on the news when I watch the one, people when they really they at are. war. I'm like, what's really going on? Like they how do you get all that? Like, there's no such. There shouldn't. We should not have militarized police in America. This is and disgusting. it's like, and you get a bunch of people who are functioning without any type of real accountability and um, all of this mob because they have a mob to me they function like mob mentality they do mentality. have a mob mentality like, We've, just like I've anybody else when you see a group see them inciting violence yeah. first ooh all the time yes I, I, anytime I'm 
I'm gonna we're gonna move to the next topic because we gotta That's bring in Miguel oh, uh, yes. Miguel Nunes. We can expand next uh, next week. Yes. But every time, well, not every time, but majority, I would say out of ten times. Out of the eight that I've been stopped by a police officer for one reason or another, they have been the aggressor. Yes. They are trying to start a fight they with me. They are. They are talking to me crazy. I mean, yelling. I, I mean, you. I'm like, yo, who are you talking to? And back up out of my space. I believe What do you, you want? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, what did I do? What do you want? Make a request. Right. Because before you, you before they make a request, they talking shit. They are. And then if you talk shit back, you're resisting the rest. Yeah. Get up on the line. Get up. It's, it's like, excuse it's like, me, how you have dare an you talk to me like that? Who are you like talking that? to? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's how they, they are. act like a mob mentality, it's like gangsters. Uh, I'm, and it's not all, but it's no, a right. lot of them. Well, and, yeah, it's I a say lot a lot. And I, I don't. My thing is, I don't. The whole bad apple thing, one bad apple. I mean, the the full thing is, what is it? One bad apple ruins the bunch. Mm-hmm. Like I look at them all the same because, to me, it's just like, yeah, you maybe you have one who shot somebody, but I, there's not enough police officers who are speaking up and speaking out against that. For so me, I told back to this guy and in, 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 in reference to what you just said mm-hmm. he made a reference to me saying that it's not every police officer I said you're absolutely right I said if you really would like to be helpful you should probably make complaints or go out and a bunch of police officers or maybe you should start it I said you can even start it go to your police precinct and make and demand that your supervisors do something about those your co-workers that are making it bad for you that so you can't actually protect and serve the community yeah, like you want to he couldn't hear that he was no. so he was he, what? Do you know what he did? He, he, he typed back to me, you're so angry. And I'm like, I ain't say one thing angry yet. No, you mad. You but don't really mad. But even if you are angry, this is something to be angry about. Yeah, though. but once again, those just ways to distract from... Yeah, but the, you start the, what your main point is... On, exactly. What's the your main, main point, point is exactly. you don't want no accountability. They don't. And they really, don't, really don't. don't. And and my issue with that, too, is, you know, yes, this is your job, but, like, this is something that can easily... Like, they are ending people's lives, people who have jobs and families and futures. And, you know, that's, that's my issue with that. Is like they, you know, police officers, they play judge and jury and executioner right you're, there on you're the spot. You're right, but they don't, you get desensitized. Like, especially when you work for, work for in a service position. I mean, you see it all the time. I was a reporter even, before even here. To, I've seen people very desensitized in, in the mm-hmm. media industry. And you have to, you have, you literally have to fight to hold on to your dignity and to your morals. Because mm. you can lose that, you know, whenever you work for the police, whenever you work in these uh, hard news media companies. Because after a while, it's just another dead body. Yep. And that's exactly how they treat it. And you have to treat and these things. So you have to be so much more somewhere. sensitive than, than the true. way people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very, very true. Mm-hmm. So real quickly... Before we bring in uh, Miguel A. Nunes, I just want to touch on, just to lighten up the mood real quick, mm-hmm. um, OnlyFans. Another a big phenomenon I have found because I'm not a social media person, but I am Show on my lane. Instagram. I'm on I my just Instagram had to teach this man how to repost something. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I don't know how to do all those things. I, I know how to like it. I do- click it twice and that's it. But um, so I seem like. A lot of people now have OnlyFans pages. Yeah. They are really going. I, I, it's funny, like, when in times of, like, economic strife, people go to, to really, their go to. Sex work increases. Yes, or to the old uh-huh. school professions. Yeah. Like, the old time. And Absolutely. And sex work and all types. It's lucrative. It's very lucrative. You can, you will make money. Do you know how many propositions I've gotten to film? Ooh. Like, that people want to film sex Nobody with me and stuff like that. And I'm like, absolutely me. not. I'm like, no, thank you. Absolutely not. But they really, they are actively asking people, oh, you want to film? I'm okay with filming for my OnlyFans page. And to be honest, I keep it real. You know, I subscribe to three different peoples. Ooh. And, and I, only for one month. Uh-huh. Because... I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, because some people have really great bodies. I'm like, mm, I want to see it naked. But after a while, you're like, yeah, uh-huh, do something. Like, I want to fuck. I want to see it. Yeah, right, naked. right. So you ain't right. doing nothing. Sometimes you ain't doing just, nothing. So I don't even, pre- I don't subscribe unless food. you popping it off. Like, it's popping. Naked. It's popping. Oh, stop. So one dude is popping. He's going to get me to resubscribe. Because he's his his OnlyFans is popping. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Maybe I'll say his name next uh, next week. So be on the lookout. So I give him a shout out. You can go and check oh out. Oh my god, his OnlyFans is popping. That's right. We support sex workers here. But yeah, <laughs> no, I I feel the same way too. Like to your point, you know, anytime there's like economic strife, sex work goes up. Uh, and I feel like, hey, if you got it, flaunt it, get people to pay for that shit, and I support it. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I, I do too. I mean, I literally support it. I, I hear every so often people are making thousands of dollars and I, hundreds of thousands of dollars on OnlyFans. Okay, I'm we, I'm gonna definitely we gonna we gonna pick this up next week because <sighs> I got I have more to more to I agree I've heard that I've, I've even one. saw an interview just real quickly. 
Miguel is there? Yeah. All right, yay. yay. So let let's let me introduce Miguel A. Nunez Jr. Um, originally from New York City. He's an American actor, public speaker, producer, and writer. He's the best known from his supporting roles in The Return of the Living Dead and the life and leaning roles of Joanna Man and Tour of Duty. Where is he? This dude is funny, mad cool. I'm hoping he pops on this, uh, pops up on the screen. And we probably got to put our headphones on so we can hear him. Oh, yes, right? <laughs> ah. Miguel, no, are you there? Oh, he can hear us. He's talking to us. Can you see us? Uh, nope. Oh, he said he can't see us. Oh, I can see you now. Oh, he sees us now. The engineer is working Aww. on that right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see him in a minute. We, we can't see you, but you can see us. What's going on, man? I'm good, man. I'm out here. We uh, we into our second season of Family Business. You know, we shot six episodes, and oh. then we uh, went down because of coronavirus, and now we are back into it. And these uh, Screen Actors Video coronavirus safety precautions are absolutely astounding we have to get tested three times a week wow and on top of getting tested three times a week we are still we have to go into a bubble like they're doing in the nba with all the cast members from the show that's shooting for the entire uh, month and then on top of that while you're in the bubble after getting tested three times a week you still gotta wear your mask and you still got a social distance <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it's very intense even at my job too or in some of the other media companies i'm working with i had they take my temperature every single time i show up mm -hmm. yeah and and they we did and you can't touch a script now you can't touch you it a script, ah, ah, ah. they'll take it and they'll spray it in a plastic bag I want to get a glass, a, a <laughs> bottle of water. Ah, ah, you can't touch the water anymore. What? Wow. So how do you drink water? They got to hand you the water when oh. you get some food. Ah, ah, you can't touch the food. Oh, there's a food when person. you go there's to get some food. There's a water person. There's a script person. You can't they touch They damn near food. pop your hand for touching anything. Oh, and that's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't touch that. <laughs> but you, you can't be mad at them for being you know, overly uh, uh, precautious on health and safety. But it is annoying. But, you know, you can't yeah. get mad. M M Miguel, um, do you have your camera on? The engineer is asking, do you have your camera on? No, it ain't on right now because I'm smoking. But when I spit the smoking, we can't. <laughs> That's totally That's fine. That's totally fine. Man, put that but he might not. No, I ain't not going to do that. Uh, this dude is funny, yo. I love his personality. I got though. excited. I was like, Chris, yeah. Why, why later and not now? <laughs> He said he don't want talking. to. He, he said we better keep <laughs> he talking. He said he don't want to. He, he got a great personality, yo. I love he, it. He he kind of pranked me. The, uh, what was it yesterday or the day before? Where y'all from? I'm, I'm from Dallas. Brooklyn. No, but where y'all at right now? New York. Crenshaw. No, we in L we in L A. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. But for you know safety purposes, you know with all COVID and all the things, he's like, yo, we 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 find it find it find it better just to have the guests. I agree with you 100. percent Yeah. It's, more, it's, it's, it's safer. It's safe. Truly. safer and people just don't understand this thing is serious there's one lady who a uh, uh, 19 people can, hold on one second well 19 people uh got coronavirus from one she took a flight and she had it. 19 people caught oh, it wow. oh my flight. god see that see if people be so irresponsible with this too yeah they do they, re they really do i i mean I, i've been on a flight with oh actually uh, yeah, within the last uh, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you I have my sanitizer, my arms, my hands, I didn't touch. When I tell you I wiped exactly. my seat down, I, like, no. I wiped that seat down. I got some I got some yeah. wet wipes. I said I'm wiped the seat down. I take it very seriously. For real, because you got to. How long have you been in um, L.A., Miguel? Oh, man, I got here in 1980, man. I got here a long time ago. Ran away from home, made three bologna sandwiches, lived downtown L.A. on the street, ended up moving to the Union Rescue Mission, the whole nine, all that stuff you hear. I went through it. Jeez. No way. Um, what? Oh yeah, I ran away. I was born in I was born in New York, but I was raised in North Carolina on a farm. Wow. Uh, and you uh, was one on day I graduated from high school. I said I wanted to be an actor, and I ran away from home. I made three bologna sandwiches and got on the bus. Wow. So after all this time, what inspires you to stay motivated and to keep keep fighting and keep going? Um, I just I don't know. I, I have no clue. I just feel like there's just so much out there, and I and. and and I know how to get it, just the process. I mean, there's very few people who, my first TV series was 1987. You guys probably weren't even born. <laughs> I wasn't. <but. laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my God. The, 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 the key to it is just, just persistent, never giving up. And I like doing what I'm doing. And the more I'm into it, I don't. I, I try to expand and learn to become a producer, a director, oh, yes. and all of that. And try we to see learn you as now. much as I can. Hey there, he got a hey, fresh haircut. We see you okay. now. 
Yeah, look at him. I know that's hey, right. you, hey. These haircuts are struggling during this pandemic. I ain't even finna frown. He went oh, like, my God. He's so funny. These haircuts be struck. Did you get rid of them? Did you get rid of them? Oh, the dogs. Oh. Hey. What's their names? Prince and Charlie. Okay. Oh. See, this is a plus. I think this is a plus with these, you know, conversations being on Skype and yeah. people are being in their own environments now. I feel like I'm in his living room. Yeah. I love you it. You is. I, I am. <laughs> I fit that, in that perspective, I'm like, oh, my God, these dogs are sitting in my lap. What, so what year did you get into um, stand-up? Did you just, like, dive right Never into comedy? Never done stand-up in my life. Did you? Okay, so did you dive right into comedy work, like, as soon as you got to L.A.? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I was actually, how I got into the business, I was literally was on a bus once. And I saw some guy. And I was homeless for a long time. Yeah. And then I, I, I was homeless for a while. And then I ended up um, I lived at the Union Rescue Mission. So um, I ended up living at the Rescue Mission for about six months. They helped me get on my feet. I ended up working at Rancho Los Amigos Hospital in Downey, taking buses. Mm-hmm. I got on welfare. They gave me a hotel downtown L.A. on 6th Street, which you wouldn't want to own if they gave it to you. Okay. Three, meals at a, three meals a day. I got on. They call it the county. I don't know what that means. You get on the county. I guess it was welfare. My rent was just oh. I had to sign my name. I got to eat three meals a day at a restaurant. So then I got off the county and started working at Rancho Los Amigos Hospital in Downey. I kept saving up my saving up my money. I didn't know you could go to Hollywood because when I actually ran away from home, I went to the bus station, asked that man for a ticket. Now you got to remember, I was 4'11 and weighed 75 pounds when I graduated. I looked nine. I looked nine. So I went to the bus station and I asked the man for a ticket to Hollywood. He said, you can't go to Hollywood. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, you go to Los Angeles. And I was like, California, okay, and I bought a ticket. Okay. I thought, I thought at that point you had to be an actor to get into Hollywood. That's how naive I was. But what happened was, which I found out later, I was at Trailway Station. And Trailway goes downtown L.A. Greyhound goes to Hollywood. I didn't know that. So yeah. I ended oh, up downtown okay. L.A. on Skid Row. Child. And that oh, wow. was the first, first time I had realized the seriousness of what I'd done. Because I had never once mm. thought about what I was going to do when I got here. I knew, I knew Yes. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, everything that happened in my career, I knew it from the age of five. I, there was no doubt in my mind. Every day of my life growing up, my nickname was Hollywood because I said exactly what happened was going to happen from the tobacco fields, picking cucumbers, picking to, uh, 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 butter beans with my grandmother, getting working all day long in the fields. That's what I had to do every wow. summer. Those were our jobs in North Carolina. And all I talked about every single day was what I was going to do here. So when I got wow. here, the first break, I was on a bus and some guy's going, studying some lines. And I'm like, what are you doing? He was like, uh, they're having a cattle call. I was like, what's that? They were having an audition for a commercial. I was like, oh, I came here to be an actor. I'm a top like this. My name is Gail Nunez. I'm with North Carolina. I came here to be an actor. And I said, what is that? He says, it's a, res- it's a resume. You're going to have to get one of these here. Take this. You're going to have to get some photos, blah, 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 blah. I look over in the park and I see cameras. So I get off on the next stop. I go to a copy place, write his name. I put my name on his resume, go back, get in line. And I got the lead in that commercial. Oh, wow. I went, <laughs> I how, went long back to in, the, how long were you, were you in L.A. before that happened? Uh, probably about eight months, okay. Okay. nine months. So, okay. And then I ended up getting the lead. I didn't know what it meant. And I told the guy, I said, send me more. I didn't know what a commercial. I don't want to be in a commercial. I want to be in movies and I don't want to be on TV. I didn't know commercial and all that stuff. I said, I want to be in movies. I said, just sign me up. You can have all that 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 money. I didn't know it was a lot of money. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, I'm going to sign you because I like you. And from that point, I think the next 50 auditions he sent me on. Um, wow. I, I probably got 48 of, 40, 48 of them. And in 1987, I got seven years later, I was on a TV series on uh, CBS, a drama on CBS, Tour of Duty, my first series. Wow. Yes. You know, I was wow. I listening to you and you said that you kind of always spoke into existence. You, like you kind of knew what you wanted to mm. do, where you wanted to go. And that was going to be one of my questions. Did you always knew there was something special or different about you, that something different was, I, was meant for you? I didn't know if it was special or nothing. I, my mom said when she, my mom, when she said, when I was little and she spanked me, I told her when I become a movie star, I'm not going to buy you nothing. <laughs> and I, I always, and my uncle, he was a Cadillac dealer and he drove, Cadillacs all across the country. He came home once with a um, a, um, a Cadillac had a California license plate. They said I sat on the sidewalk rubbing his license plate all day long. Said this oh, wow. is in California. This is where I'm gonna live. This was in California. I, wow. I, I knew it. I told every single about it. As soon as I graduate, I'm going to run away. As soon as I graduate, I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to be in the movies. I'm going to be in TV. They were like, nigga, every single person <laughs> in my entire life. No one 
ever told me that I could do it. Every single mm. body in, in my life. And that's, that's the lesson. Nobody can ever tell you and nobody can stop your dream. And don't let anybody dissuade you. Every single person in my life from this, from the tobacco field, you're poor, you're black, you're skinny, you're ugly. Cause I was really skinny. You're poor, you're black, you're skinny, you're ugly. And you're out here on a farm. There is no way possible. You're going to become an actor. There are actors in New York, Hollywood, Chicago, Atlanta, there are acting yeah. schools, lawyers, managers, screen mm. actors, skill, blah, 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 blah. How are you going to do it? And I said, I promise you, I guarantee you, I know it. I guarantee you. That's all I ever said to them. Then when I got to California, I was downtown living on Skid Row in the streets. I was sure. telling all my little street homeless friends, I'm going to be able to, how are you going to be able to, you're poor, you're ugly, you're skinny, you're black, you're downtown, oh, no, you're LA, no. you look like shit, oh, you're dirty. How is it ever? Every single body tried to tell me, you need to start thinking about something more serious and you're smart. You need to start doing this. I ha there was not one single iota of doubt in my entire life. I mm. it wasn't like I thought it. It wasn't like I dreamed it. It wasn't like something I wanted to do. I didn't never even watch TV. I had a freak I know about an actor. Mm. Before I when I wanted to be an actor, I didn't even know what it was. Mm. When I said I want to be in movies on TV, I don't think up until that point I had ever even watched television except the Flintstone. There had never been a desire. To, to be, there's never been a show that never was that moment when I was looking at TV going, I want to do that. It was never, it was like from the moment I could think, I knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful because I felt the same way when I was growing up because I'm, I'm from Dallas and I was also grew up in East Texas too. I literally grew up on a farm as well. So that is very refreshing to hear. But I, my mom even told me, she was like, you know, I feel that there's greatness for you. Like there is something destined for you. And when I moved out here, I didn't know exactly where I was going to live and how I was going to get there. But it is truly something that you just know internally. And that you can't allow like external distractions to tell you that it's not going to happen for you. That's not going to mm -hmm. work. It's just like... I am so solidified because what I tell people too now is just like my ancestors have wanted this for me as well. Like this is a path that's already been set out for me and there's really nothing anybody can do to interfere with that. So, you need to believe absolutely. me. Absolutely. And, 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 and it goes back to exactly the same thing the Bible says and what you said in the first thing, call it an existence. Yes. Now that that part of uh, 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 I never knew about, I never heard anything about mm. all of that. Mm. I didn't. I, I was raised in the church because I was a PK, my grandmother and grandpa. My mother was from New York. My mother ran away from the same house I was born in, Wilson, North Carolina, my grandparents, her parents. And she ran away from New York at 17, lived in the street. She was on a TV show, the first black on a TV show way back in the day called Hollabaloo. It was the first American bandstand. She looked white. She had long black hair. She was super fine, super gorgeous, looked mixed. And she was one of the go-go girls dancing up with the go-go boots. What was the name of the show boots. again? Hollabaloo. Hollabaloo. Well, okay. And my mother, my up. mother, yeah. my mother is the writer of It's a Man's World, James Brown's biggest hit. Really? My mother wrote that yeah, that's how she, my mother was the writer of that song, Betty oh, Newsom. Wow. That's my mom. She was going with James Brown at the time. My mother came to New York. So my mother went ran away from home at 17. She went to New York. She had my older brother, took him back and gave when he got three, gave him to my grandmother because she lived on the farm and needed boys. Had next year had me, gave him gave us to my grandmother. I had eight boys and one girl, eight years in a row, and turned gave us all to my grandmother and grandfather to raise. And then we saw her probably once every two or three years. That's a whole nother story. Wow. Um, Miguel, I feel like they should hire you to do voiceovers I at the mean. end of commercials when they have to tell all the side effects. Because he talks so <laughs> fast. <laughs> and I'm trying to catch it. It's so much. It's but, so much but you still understand. Yeah. You understand, but it's going. You, you, you just got to pay hear attention. It here. You hear it here. That's right. Yes, you have to pay attention. That's right. Let me ask you really quickly. Nowadays, what's most pressing in your heart? Like from day to day, like what's the most pressing thing on your heart nowadays? Right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now. Getting out the vote. <laughs> yes. The most important thing right now, it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how we live. It doesn't matter what success you have right now. Trump must be defeated. Trump yeah. must be defeated. Uh, you know what I mean? To me right now, I mean, I'm, I'm set for life. I, whether Trump win or lose, I'm set for life. Mm. But this, the country that I live in, democracy is at stake. It's all of that right now. And I've never seen a more racist person. He has divided this country more than since it was or when slavery ended. I think he's, he's stirred all the racists to the top. He's mm. creating divisions. He's sending out little buzzwords constantly. And I think he is, he is really bad for America. And the only thing that's pressing for me right now is two things. Defeating Trump and making people totally understand that there is a God, and if you ain't getting right, it's it's we're in the last day. We're in that part where when 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 uh, uh, um, 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 Moses was built, not Moses, uh, who was building the ark. Noah was building the ark. Noah's ark, yeah. And he was telling everybody it's gonna rain. And right now we're telling everybody, guys, we're destroying the planet. This and this is happening. He's mm. telling that they thinking, yeah, okay, right. And they just kept on going out and partying. 
And just like we're doing, we're ignoring everything. We're ignoring all the signs. And then we did, okay, yeah. And then that's just when it got too late. Yeah. Everybody started knocking on the door, but it was too late. And mm-hmm. we're doing that exact same thing yeah, now. I, I often feel like in these times, um, we are living in the times of when people used to uh, talk about the world, the world is flat. Like those, like that's the, exactly I, right. I feel like that's, that's the type. Exactly. That's what we live in now. Mean. Our version of that, like people uh, are like, no, the world is flat. You're uh, gonna, you're gonna fall off if you go too far. No, and I'm like, oh my god. Uh, and then you got leaders spreading the flat, the flat theory. You know yeah. What I'm yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially yeah. yeah, when it comes to COVID and stuff. We like we literally have political leaders and faith leaders who are telling audiences and congregations that this isn't even that serious, and people are literally dying from this too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's he's, right. He's and he's so they, irresponsible. Con- con- and divide. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's really how you do it. When you yeah, get people exactly bickering, right. fighting from the inside and yeah. nobody trusts anything and, and they're too busy fighting, then you can mm-hmm. really get, that's when you can pull some real stunts mm-hmm. and get control. Truly. You know? Truly. So let me let me ask you, throughout all of your journeys thus far, what is something that you've learned that you didn't know back then that you wish you could have known or that you would tell somebody that was up and coming, another up and coming comedic mm. actor or or entertainer? That you're like, look, you should know these three things. Ooh, three things you should know. Everybody that is around you is not for you. Amen. That's and that is the Amen. hardest lesson. Amen. Oh. I'm with you on Every, that one. Everybody around you let me, is not for really, you. Really quick, and, before you move no, on to two. Keep on. Before keep on, you move yes. on to two, let me ask you. Um, how, what's a telltale? How can you tell when it's time, when, a, when a person is not for you Ooh, I got and it's time to move up. on? Mm-hmm. You listen to me. You have to, I, I, you can call it the Holy Spirit. You can call it yes. intuition. Your gut. You know, mm-hmm. you usually know. And what happens is most people will know and they will overlook it for their own certain purposes because they figure I'm trying to do something too. So they're overlooking yes, and then right, they get true, embroiled yeah. in so much controversy and bull. Listen to me. You don't stop it immediately. You mm. can stop it immediately. You, mm. We lay man uh, landmines for ourselves down the road by the choices and decisions that we make now. Mm. That's bottom line. You make a decision right now and then down the road, you living all good. And you're like, wait a minute, I did everything right for the last four months. Okay, yeah, but you stepping in a landmine that you laid eight, nine months ago when you did this. Mm. If you do everything right, keep everything pure. When those people come to you, you... Listen to me. There's never been anybody that's filed. You, you don't uh, immediately know. Your spirit know. Yes. It's yeah. you try to reason with your yeah. own yes. intuition and your yeah. own spirit mm-hmm. and, and thinking about the shit that you might be into. Yeah. You trying, well, I can do it and you and I can do it. All yeah. of that stuff. And you, then you start to compromise. And now you and him on a play. Okay, well, you think that? Okay, yeah. Then say this, say this. Okay. And then you start saying that. <laughs> I've learned to listen, <laughs> listen to how my body feels whenever I, that yes. person is around me. One the telltale energy. sign for me is whenever I'm sharing my positive information. Exactly with somebody and how do they respond to that? Do, do they, they respond with paranoia you? and fear and negativity? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And if you hang with dogs, you're gonna get fleas. Always get with people that's gonna uplift people that are positive Thank and you. uplifting. That's one thing. Okay, so what was the next one? What oh, the what's your other two that you would give to up and coming people? What's some advice. Other two? advice. Yeah, never let anybody dictate to you what you are capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Never let anybody dictate to you what you're capable of doing. Because a lot of times, if I had to listen to everybody, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I would, I would have right. thought about everything he said. If I had to listen to everybody who told me it's not positive, if I had to listen to everybody who told me, you need to go think about something, I might have went into it and said, you know what, if I, and I might have done this. I wouldn't have came to California with $2 when I got here. Ate out of the trash, woke up with lice every day at the oh, Union Rescue oh. Mission. Had to get sprayed with poison. I wouldn't have went through all of that had I not known and had that confidence in myself. If mm. you go start half-stepping, mm-hmm. half-stepping through life and through what you're trying to do, you're going to easily be dissuaded if you half-stepping. If could you, you wouldn't have got off downtown and saw I slept behind the bus station the first two nights. And and you won't be able to, to, to withstand the fiery darts unless you are spiritually the same thing as a, the spirit the, the Bible teach. You won't not be able to, unless you're spiritually strong, you'll not be able to the fiery darts. You won't be able to block them off. That's the same thing in life. If you don't have total confidence in yourself and you don't know in your heart and in your mind, then those fiery darts of doubt will come to you and they will stop you or they will hold you yeah. back. Curious. Yes. Mm. Amen. And, and my last <laughs> thing is, okay. and my last thing is, <laughs> don't get caught up in all the world's 
trickery. Drama. Treat everybody according to the Bible. Black, white, old, young, gay, straight, uh -huh. go straight to the Bible. And I'm going to give it to you very straight. The Bible is very straight. The Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. I have never once read in the Bible where it says, love thy straight neighbor. Mm. Ever. The yeah. Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself. So if your neighbor is gay, your neighbor is a trans or even whatever, the God tells you to do what? To love them. Love. Mm-hmm. Period. That's all. That's what he tells you to do. It ain't up to you. You judge not. He may not be a judge. It ain't got their life has nothing to do with you. You're supposed to love everybody. And if we practice that, just loving everybody and accepting everybody, that's what all we are here to do. That's why God said the principal thing is love. Get love. If you follow those three, three things, God protects where God directs. Mm -hmm. If you follow those principles, there is no way you want to achieve what you're trying to do. None. Right. And never take no for an answer. Let because me find I, out he's also I, a pastor. Uh, have you? Have you ever? No, no, I haven't. But let me give you an example. I never take a no for an answer. When I got okay. here, I was like telling people, hey, listen, I want to go to Universe Studio and I want to walk around inside the studios and I want to walk around on all, this, on all the stages and I want to see how they do movies. And my friend said, you, you're skinny ass out of here. They ain't going to let you do that. Oh. Um, mm. Right. So I'm like, what is he talking about? I'm like, I got to get some juice. My phone's dying. So and then I'm like, what is he talking about? So then um, I go. And I go to the studio anyway. Mm -hmm. And I walk up to the, is it charging? Yeah. And I walk up and I ask this man, the guy at the studio, the security guard, hi, my name is Mike Miguel Nunez. I, I'm from Wilson, North Carolina. I came here, I want to be an actor. And I want to walk around and say, he said, man, get out of here. You can't. Get your skinny ass out of here. You can't come in here and do that. And I just walked away and I'm like, I don't understand this. They said I, they, said they wouldn't let me. And he said, I can't. Those mm. things, I'll never get what I want to do if I just take that. Yeah. So, yeah. so I went out, and back then, I sold my blood plasma. So I sold my blood plasma. You got $7. If you oh, did it wow. twice in the same week, you get $14. So I saved up my money for blood plasma. I went and took the Universal Studio tour. And I'm, walk, I'm sitting on the tour, and I'm sitting on the tour, and I'm sitting on the tour. Then I go, aha, I got them. So then I went away, waited a few more weeks, saved up my money, did my blood plasma, saved up my money. I went back, took the Universal Studio tour. And there's a part on the tour where they get off the tram. Everybody get off. Everybody get off and come over here. Line up along this wall right here. Everybody line up and we're going to go this way and we're going to see how they do movies. So everybody come, come this way, come this way, come this way. Oh. While everybody was coming this way, this way, I went that way, that way. Okay. <laughs> so funny. And I went to all the different stages. I went inside, I went up to the top, and I was there all day long watching how they did movies. Wow. Exactly what my friend told me they was not going to let me do. Exactly what the guy at the front gate told me I can't do, I did. I heard that. Come on, so you, yeah. you can't... You can't what's the most they could do? Say, excuse me, sir. You went. What's the most they could do? Excuse me, sir. You went the wrong way. Yeah. Please join That's the group. That's it. You and then you just play crazy. Hell. <laughs> no, I got I, lost. They, they, but back then it wasn't like it is now. That's okay. true. Because oh, like, you, true, you yeah. are able to get away with that. Yeah. Back, yeah, yeah. No, you can't. I wouldn't have been able to do it now. -uh. But back then there was nothing. There was no security. It was nothing. Wow. Just walk back. And then I got back in line, and went. And then at the end of the day, I would go back and get it. I found out what was the last one coming out. Then I would go back and get in the line and go go on and go through the thing because the, the tram would meet you on the other side. Whatever tour was there, I'd get in and go and get finished the tour with that. Wow. Oh, wow. Not he had a whole system. I love it. Yeah, I love I, it. I, it. What I really there, hear. There, there was no system. The only system was not taking no and finding a way to. Yeah, get, that's what yeah, I'm saying. You, you made a way out of no yeah. way. She said you there put you together a plan. Perfect. I think to me, I'm hearing you. You sound like a real hustler. For real. Like you, you be making. You be like, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. Listen, make it. I no, love that spirit. I, I, I know. I hustle, but I'm not a hustler. Oh, what is the difference here? Yeah, you're right. I get it. Okay. Well, hustle. Well, that's what I, I, I meant. Hustle. You I hustle. I'll it. make ways. I hustle. I, I hustle. You I make ways. I, I make sacrifices. I create. Yes. I I'm the hustle. same way. I'm right with you. I'm the same exact way. So let me let me let me ask you, like right now for myself, right? As I'm um slowly growing with the different projects that I'm producing, executive producing and stuff like that. Um, I found through a life that it's always for me, mm -hmm. I felt like I need I've always wanted a 
someone who has done it before me, yes. a mentor. Like, um, because I, I, otherwise, I feel like I'm just out there figuring it out on my Sometimes, own. Sometimes, yeah. And I often, I was, I've always been one who like to listen to the elders. Like, what are they yeah. saying? Yeah. And there's I, wisdom I love, there. I love unsung and behind the music. That's like, I shit. actually watch because I'm and I'm <laughs> yes. listening. Like, oh, okay. I know I need to get an attorney. Don't just sign that contract. Okay. I need if I don't got nobody to get the money. Uh-huh. So my question is. Um, I often, I also find along the way that it's really not good to know everybody either. Like sometimes <sighs> it's good not to know everybody. Oh, um, I have some stories. So about what, that. what, it, according to you, like from your experience, do you think it's been beneficial to have, um, a mentor, a mentor all the time yeah. or like, cause some, you know, some people feel like they got to get out there and they need to get to know everybody. They need, mm-hmm. everybody need to know their name and they need to meet all these different people. I found that the opposite, like you don't need to, you just need to know the right person. Yeah. Have you a mentor that has a connections and has a good, uh, reputation? That can help. Yeah. But listen to me. I had no one. Yeah. No one. Listen to me very carefully. You can have a mentor and you can have somebody to try to help you or show you, or you can learn all it is that I wanted to learn all about it, what it is that I wanted a mentor for and what it was. If I wanted to write, I wanted to produce, I wanted to sell a project. And now it's so much easier to find out. I want to learn exactly about that. Now, if you go in to meet, if you had a mentor and he took you in to meet, Joe Blow, and he meant talked about you and pushed you and talked about how good you are and you're going to be and your pride stuff. Okay, fine. Now, I go in there and meet that same guy that you went in there with your guy, and I spend all of my energy developing what it is that I'm talking about, mm. the project, and yes. put all of my energy into the project, learning from the book, laying it out, and I go in there with my project. They're going to go with that because this guy put it into it. He knows what he's talking about. I would just, with every project you're trying to do, if you try to write, you try to write a book, you try to write a script, you try to write a movie, learn all about it. They got so many script writing programs out there, and it takes nothing. The only difference between you and a writer is he writes. Mm. So yeah. just keep on doing it, keep on learning the process. And the next thing you know, there's so many scripts, thousands of scripts are sold by first time writers first time storytellers mm. all the time mm. and to produce is easy to produce is just putting it together you can get an iphone two mm. three little white boys okay. just sold a movie for three million dollars shot on their iphone okay wow and you just got an idea anybody that's listening right now you got an idea mm. oh they don't take nothing instead of sitting around smoking weed or hanging out all day and every week with your boys sit down and say hey, listen guys why don't we come up with a movie and what about the first scene and then you come up with the first scene you shoot it with your iphone and you can edit it on your iphone and hey, what happens next and then after you do about five or six or seven eight you're gonna really get into it mm. you're gonna be talking okay who can we get to do this part and then you could be finding scenes and say the next thing you know yeah. you are producing the yeah. first thing may come out looking like a doo the second may thing may come out looking like a, 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 gold, a golden eagle you don't know yeah. the problem, The best thing is to do it the, most people spend so much yes, time trying to find somebody to help them yeah. uh, yes I agree Ooh, I always buy. do it I have it. a hard time asking for I help I never show up and I'm not already done it usually mm-hmm. I've, I've already done the project now I'm I ain't just, asking nobody for yes. it. yeah I'm gonna learn it and I'm gonna bring yeah. it I'm not gonna have you teach I'm not gonna go to you and show you show me how to do a movie I already know you know how to do it you learn I'm gonna do it and okay. I've done it enough I kind of know how they go I'm gonna find out if I want to write a script that's how I do it now I'm gonna find out shoot this scene that's easy I'm gonna need yeah. a house and three actors and a camera Listen, Miguel, you're so funny. <laughs> okay. Miguel, you are funny. Miguel, listen, so we're about to close out the show, but before we do, I want to give you some flowers before you give you your flowers while you're alive. First of all, the first thing I wanted to say earlier um, when you first showed up on the screen was, damn, black don't crack. Yeah, I mean this the exact like, like, same way from I when we do hotel. I was like, yo, black <laughs> don't crack. He looked the same exact way. As when, I'm like, yo, yo, some people making deals with the devil, yo. I'm like, no. like don't do black don't crack. That's so, a secret. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think the, personally, the I think the secret is not, cocoa butter. I'm just staying young, but reversing the aging process. I'm getting younger. Reversing the aging process. Pam Lorenz, uh, hey, Tate. I'm I like, can't, what yes, is going on? Halle Berry. Halle, what is going on? It's a couple on? of y'all. I'm like, I don't Pharrell understand. Pharrell is aging backwards. Yes, yeah, something ain't right. I can't tell I'm you. Listen, Miguel, we, we do have to go. Listen, I'm, I want to invite you back. This season, Done. I'm gonna keep in track. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep track with you. I'm gonna text you. I definitely want to have you back. You have the best guest. Yes, so you're animated. Awesome, I love it. Animated personality and a depth of knowledge and experience. Because All right. and make just, sure you guys follow me on Instagram. M Nunez Jr. I'm gonna M-N-U-N-E-Z-J-R. do it. M N U N E Z J R. Yes. Oh, one really quickly. I know you started out telling us the current projects you were working on, but tell us one more time. Tell everybody one more Ooh, time. Yes. Oh, it's family business. You can catch us on. We're on a, a BET Plus right now. 
uh, first season on BET Plus, and the s- first six episodes of second season are on BET Plus, Family Business. All right. Thanks, Miguel. I Lit. appreciate you. God bless you, you guys. Same to you. You're Matt Austin. Awesome. Love you, man. Take care. Talk to you Stay later. Stay safe. Later. Wow. All right, so Ivana, you want to take us out? Cause I yes, <laughs> I will. That was so lovely. Oh that my god, awesome. that was really great. That's that's a good way to bring back comedic minds. I will say yes. that. Like you did a really great job booking this for the first episode. I love it. And where can we find you as well on me? socials? No, I don't want people to look, don't look for me. Go to Crucial Stop. Conversations. Go to the the show's uh, social media. Crucial Conversations TV is on Instagram, um, Twitter. And Facebook. Crucial we still convers- don't find you from there. I mean, if you, go through the trouble, if you go through the trouble to find me, that's fine. But I am not giving it out. But yeah, Crucial Conversations TV. Please go check us out. Um, there okay. you'll see all the all the things for comedic yes, minds. Yes, yes. And our promo videos up there too from oh, the yeah, last check it season. Out. It's so funny. Y'all, Maybe we, y'all let's, love it. Let's play. You want to play it? Not this. We'll play it next week. Yes, please. We'll play, we'll play the promo. Please. All right. Well, we got to go. So yes. Go and y'all can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Holla at me anytime. I'm also on uh, All Def Cannabis. So you can find me there if you want to keep up with me, some more of my work. Um, so you can find me at Hey, I'm Ivana. Again, that's Hey, I'm I V A N N A. And this has been another episode of Comedic Minds, so we will check y'all out next week. Don't you go nowhere. Come back, okay? Take care. Yes, stay safe. you'll love the guests from next for next week too. Yeah. Peace. Take it easy. Crucial.